Hi, this is Gabe at FluentForever.com. In this tutorial, I wanted to talk about two more of the Anki add-ons I use when I study Japanese. Uh, both of these add-ons supply furigana readings of kanji characters, which is to say that they tell you how to pronounce a new kanji character. Uh, the first one is a really, really popular one. It's called Japanese Support. It has a lot of features, but I mostly use it just to give me furigana readings of whatever I type in, since it's one of the most reliable and fast ways to get those. I'll show you how to install it and customize it to fit your card models. The installation process is the same as the last tutorial, but the customization process is a little more complex than we went through in the last one. So first we're going to find it. You go to Add-ons, Tools to Add-ons, to Browse and Install. And then you need the code for this software, and so you'll hit the Browse button. It'll open up this giant window of add-ons. And you can search for uh, support is probably your best bet. There's a Chinese support and then there's a Japanese support. You'll see it's about, I don't know, a quarter of the way down the page. Japanese support it has 72 ratings, which is one of the more popular ones on the site. Um, if you scroll down, you'll find the uh, download link number and we'll type it in here. Copy and paste it and add. Uh, this will then download for a little while and we'll come back when it's done. All right, it's finished. It says download successful just like last time. Please restart Anki and we'll do just that. So we'll quit and start it back up. Uh, Japanese tests. So at this point, um, the way this plugin works by default is similar to the last one. It's looking for something in a particular field. In this case, it's called expression. It requires a model that says the word Japanese in it. You can't have just basic demo. It needs to say Japanese basic demo. And then if we write in some sort of, uh, I don't know, uh, sawaru. Sawaru. Um, if you write something in this expression field, no, sawaru, then it's going to give you this furigana reading, which is really nice. Uh, and it sticks all the furigana in brackets after each kanji, and then it, it sort of handles the hiragana next to it uh, just fine. And so you can even write some sort of long sentence. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Watashi wo sawaru. Watashi wo sawaru. And it will give you this whole thing. So this is a really handy plugin to have. The only issue is that if your model doesn't have the word expression and reading in it, then it doesn't really work. So let's customize this. The customization process in this is not the same as the last one. It's actually kind of a pain. So let's <laughs> deal with that. Uh, you'll go to Tools, to Add-ons, to Open Add-ons Folder. Um, because you can't edit this within Anki. <clears throat> and so we're going to go into this Japanese folder, and we're going to edit this reading uh, code. And to do this, we need to open this in some sort of text editor. And so on a Mac, I'm going to open this up with, uh, I guess text edit would be fine. Everyone has that on a Mac. Um, Windows, I'm not sure. Probably Notepad will do it just fine. Um, and just like last time, we have something called source fields and destination fields. And in this case, we see the expression thing and the reading thing. Uh, this part is the same as the last one. In my case, for my own model, um, which again, we'll talk about in the next tutorial. Uh, where is it? It's over here. Um, I'm looking for something in the word in kanji, hanzi field. And so I'm going to put that in the source field over here. Word in kanji, hanzi. And then where do I want to get this, this furigana reading? Well, I'm going to get this in the pronunciation kind of pinion field. Remember, you can put this wherever you want. And in my case, this is where I like to stick it. And I'll show you why later on <laughs> when we talk about this giant, giant, giant card model. Um, at this point, I can simply save this. Command S or save. Leave Control S on a Windows device. And at that point, we're done. We need to restart Anki one more time. And if we open up Japanese test, what we should see is that if I put something like sawaru in hiragana, it will pop up right there. And you see my kanji colorizer thing is still working. We're getting multiple add-ons now working at the same time for us, which is just what we want. So next step, we want to talk about a second add-on. Well, the second add-on is actually very similar to the first one. It's called Japanese pronunciation slash pitch accent. Um, and it also supplies furigana readings for the kanji you type in. The big difference between this one and the last one is that it also tells you about pitch accents in the word you've typed. So you're getting this extra layer of pronunciation information, which is honestly usually really hard to find. Pitch accent is not in most dictionaries. 
So this plugin is really great. The only issue with it is that it generally only works when you type in a single word. It, it doesn't really work with phrases or conjugated verbs and things. So that first plugin we installed ends up being a lot more dependable. And when you can get in for extra information from this pitch accent plugin, well, that's just kind of a bonus. Um, installing and configuring this one is basically the same as the very first tutorial. We're going to find it on this uh, big Anki add-ons page. Um, we'll look for pitch. No, not in hiragana. Pitch. Uh, Japanese pronunciation pitch accent. It's around, I don't know, a third the way down the page. Um, we'll get this number and we'll paste it in here. This one is not so big, so we don't have to wait that long. It should be done in just a second. And so it will download. It will say, please restart Anki. We'll do the exact same thing. Um, in this case, the default behavior of this plugin is that it wants you to put something in the expression field. So we have a demo for that one too. Um, we put something in the expression field like Sawaru. Uh, and in this case, as soon as you get out of here, it sticks this in here. Sawaru. It has uh, basically, if it's a high syllable, it has a line over it. Uh, and if there's a down step afterwards, it'll put a little down arrow afterwards. Um, so this plugin's kind of awesome. I, I really like the information it gives you. Uh, but again, it's stuck with expression and pronunciation when I want it to have something different. Um, in my case, I want it to have word in kanji hanzi. And uh, I'm going to stick it in the pronunciation recording field, just so it's not overlapping with the other one. So how do I do this? Um, the way you do that is you go back to here. Exactly the same thing we did last time. You go to the NHK pronunciation plugin. That's sort of the, the file name of this thing. And you go to edit. Uh, and right here, we see the exact same thing. Source fields, destination fields. Here, instead of expression, what I want is uh, word in kanji hanzi. For me, if you have a different card model, you're going to want something different. Uh, and in my case, I want pronunciation but not just pronunciation. I want pronunciation recording and not recording and not in hiragana. Save. Uh, at this point, you have to restart Anki again. Yes, lose everything. Start up again. And at this point, we should have all of the plugins installed and they should all work and I have no other add-ons to suggest. Uh, so if I write in my own card model, since I've changed all this, sawaru, not sawari, sawaru, I get the furigana reading. I get another furigana reading. In this case, it, it, it always sticks it in katakana um, with pitch accent. And I get my stroke order diagram. Um, the next tutorial we're going to talk about is this giant card model that I use for Japanese and why I use it and all that. Um, thanks so much, and I will see you next time.